Ethical Imaging Seminar Series. Um, I'd like to begin the meeting by acknowledging that um, I am working today on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Um, the University of Sydney um, spans the lands of many of our First Nations people and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples on the call, noting that um, a number of us in the audience are also on uh, interstate lands as well. So it's a very great pleasure to introduce our speaker for today. It's Dr. Nicola Giannotti, um, who is going to um, present to us um, a, a similar presentation that he did at the European Congress of Radiology. Um, Nicola is a lecturer here in the discipline of medical imaging sciences and um, over to you, Nicola. Thank you, Sarah, for the presentation. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to, I've been asked by the IMFACT uh, group today to deliver a, a similar presentation to the one that I delivered at the European Congress of Radiology last July in Vienna which was a nice event to get together with colleagues uh, after two years of uh, online uh, conferences. Uh, looking forward to more uh, kind of these conferences in the future, back to kind of normal. Um, so I want to start the presentation by acknowledging that uh, the larger uh, group that contributed uh, to the study. Uh, it, so I'm presenting on behalf of the uh, larger group uh, um, and uh, the study focused on the visual grading assessment of the performance of photon counting and flat panel uh, X-ray uh, detectors in the setting of uh, PB uh, CT propagation-based phase contrast breast computed uh, tomography. Uh, so as we will see later in the next few uh, slides, uh, very uh, briefly, uh, two participating centers uh, were uh, involved in this uh, study. One in Melbourne, the IMBL, uh, which is a synchrotron facility, and, uh, and the other one in uh, Trieste, Italy, uh, which is another synchrotron uh, facility. So um, in this study here, we were uh, able, uh, conducted mainly by um, Dr. Uh, Taba, uh, Amir uh, Tavakoli Taba and Tim Guriev, uh, along with the other team members, uh, we were able to recreate a similar uh, scanning conditions between the two centers. Uh, the main uh, difference uh, uh, in the technology used uh, between the two centers was the uh, detecting technology. So a, a, a flat panel detector, if we want, if we, if if we wish, we can call it for the purpose of this presentation, a more conventional type of detecting system was used at the EMBL in Melbourne, whereas a photon counting detector system was used um, in uh, Italy at the CRM in Trieste. Uh, a bit of background before moving into the uh, technical details of the study. So breast cancer is the leading cause of death from cancer in women worldwide with over 2 million diagnosed every year across the globe. Uh, currently, uh, digital mammography and digital breast tomosynthesis are the two gold standard imaging uh, techniques used in breast cancer screening program to detect neoplastic uh, lesions. However, uh, these two imaging modalities have a relatively high false negative uh, rate estimated according to the uh, recent uh, um, literature available uh, in 30% in women with non-dense breast parenchyma and almost 40% uh, in the subgroup of women presenting with denser breast parenchyma. So there is a clear urgent uh, need to uh, investigate and develop uh, 
uh, new uh, imaging uh, uh, tools, new imaging techniques that might be able to assist uh, with uh, and improve uh, diagnostic accuracy and uh, for, for better risk stratification of, uh, of these uh, patients. Propagation-based phase contrast uh, is a promising a diagnostic technique capable of providing full 3D images with high contrast to noise ratio at clinically uh, compatible radiation dose uh, levels. Uh, in addition to uh, the attenuation of, uh, of the X-ray beams uh, going through the uh, matter, going through the human body and eventually hitting the detector, which is basically the uh, which is the uh, basics behind the image uh, formation in conventional uh, uh, diagnostic uh, radiology. If we think about CT systems or how the image is generated even with uh, uh, X-rays, uh, PBCT, so propagation phase contrast, uh, uh, can detect phase contract effects due to the phase shift occurring to X-rays when traveling through uh, matter. And this, according again to the literature and the previous data in soft tissues at 10 to 100 keV, the phase shifts are larger than conventional attenuation contrast. So on this basis, uh, further uh, research has been done uh, with the aim of uh, using uh, uh, this knowledge to generate images with higher uh, contrast. Uh, compared to the current images that we can generate uh, uh, using uh, attenuation-based X-ray uh, systems. Uh, so the choice of the imaging detector will play, plays already, but will play a crucial role in the final image, uh, in generating the final image and in the final image analysis in order to provide uh, radiologists uh, better uh, images or images that might be easier to uh, read and where uh, a lesion can be identified in a timely, efficient ma man manner to avoid uh, the high rate of uh, uh, false negative that we reported earlier on. So currently, there are two main type of detecting technologies available. Uh, one is the uh, conventional uh, flat panel detector, uh, which involves an indirect, which involves a conversion of the uh, energy uh, collected by the incident photon into light, and then an electric signal is generated, as we will see later, to generate the final image. And the other uh, technology, which is rather new, is a photon counting uh, technology. So these detectors are able to generate an electric signal that can be uh, that can be processed to generate the final image without that uh, photon light uh, uh, intermediate uh, step. So the objective of the study was really to compare the performance uh, of photon counting uh, the of the photon counting detector available uh, at the center in Trieste, Italy, with uh, uh, the flat panel the detectors available at the IMBL synchrotron facility in Melbourne using uh, similar scanning conditions. Uh, you can see here the details of the two um, detectors used in this study. Uh, so phase contrast uh, coronal uh, images of mastectomy specimens, as once again, were scanned at similar uh, imaging uh, condition. Uh, and uh, all these phase contrast images for visual uh, grading analysis were compared with absorption-based CT images uh, that were used as uh, uh, references. So very briefly, uh, for the known detecting technology experts, uh, if we are looking at the image on top, this represents uh, an ex this. This is an example of uh, how um, conventional flat panel detectors work. So the detecting units are separated by a wall, which is called septa. 
Uh, this is to avoid uh, crosstalk between the uh, adja between adjac adjacent detecting uh, units. Uh, when the X-ray photon is emitted from the X-ray tube, goes through the body, is attenuated, eventually hits the detector, and within the detecting unit, the energy of the uh, incident photon is converted into uh, light, and then there are like photomultipliers within the uh, circuit of the uh, detecting unit, which basically are capable of reading uh, this light and convert this into an electric signal, which will be eventually used to generate uh, uh, the raw data and eventually the final image. In the photon detecting technology, uh, this light, this photon light uh, electric signal step, uh, it doesn't really uh, exist. So the X, the energy um, from the photon hitting the detecting unit is immediately uh, read and converted into a, an electric signal that again is used to generate the final, uh, the final image. This allowed uh, vendors, I guess, to uh, develop uh, uh, photon counting detector systems with a significantly smaller pixel uh, uh, detecting unit size. It is important to mention that the, the size of the detecting unit in the photon counting uh, detector corresponds to the limit of the spatial resolution. And in the, in the case of this uh, specific study was of 0 0.06 millimeter. Uh, in comparison, uh, the flat panel detector used in this study here had a pixel size of 0 0.1 millimeter, but uh, an actual spatial resolution of 0 0.16. So that's more than double uh, compared to the uh, single photon, sorry, compared to the photon counting uh, uh, detectors. So very briefly uh, with photon counting, uh, detectors, uh, we are able uh, to improve uh, or generate uh, images, images with uh, higher uh, spatial uh, resolution. Um, and uh, yeah, with higher spatial resolution, and therefore that's what we uh, compared. So these are the details, the technical details of uh, um, of the scanning conditions that different but similar scanning conditions used between uh, the center uh, in Trieste and the IMBL center uh, in uh, Melbourne. Uh, I said similar conditions because due to mechanical limitations, so the way that the two centers and the two synchrotron, synchrotron facilities are built, we can see that there's the distance in Trieste that is bigger than the distance in Sydney between the source and the uh, detect, between the sample uh, and the detector. Uh, so by adjusting slightly the radiation dose uh, used and considering uh, the absorption of uh, X-rays uh, within the air, we assume that the scanning conditions would have been eventually uh, similar. Uh, very similar scanning conditions were used to obtain the reference image, which is a conventional, which was generated as a conventional absorption based CT image, and that was used uh, to compare the images generated with, uh, with um, phase propagation uh, technology. We scanned uh, three specimens, uh, three mastectomy specimen on a coronal plane in uh, uh, Melbourne and six, sorry, three in Trieste and six were scanned in uh, Melbourne. The images generated were graded for image quality assessment using a scale from minus two to plus two and were defined uh, as you can see, uh, as you can see 
in the bullet points here. So the perceptible contrast was assessed as well as lesions, sharpness, tissue interfaces, calcification, visibility, image noise, and the presence of artifacts. In terms of uh, statistical analysis, the inter-observer agreement was uh, um, tested using the intra-class correlation test. And uh, for the image quality, the AUC, so the area under the curve, uh, plotted from the rating data from the PBCT, uh, pro pro from the propagation-based images, was used to measure the difference in the image quality of the two uh, PBCT images obtained from the two uh, centers. Uh, I'm the, the, this is on the left hand side on this slide here and on this slide here we can see the two reference uh, images uh, obtained with the conventional uh, uh, absorption based uh, um, imaging uh, technique. So these two reference images were compared with the images generated with the uh, photon with, sorry, with the uh, propagation-based uh, um, technology using the uh, synchrotron. And I, I do apologize, I guess you can't really spot that, you can't really identify uh, the differences by just looking at the slide, but if we're looking at the table here, we can see that uh, um, images uh, obtained with the photon counting uh, detector scored, uh, uh, generally scored a higher or recorded a higher AUC uh, value, significantly value if we're looking at the p-value as well, uh, higher than the, core, than the ones generated using the uh, flat panel uh, detector at similar scanning conditions and also at a reduced radiation uh, dose. The ICC test, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that for this analysis, for the visual grading assessment, 11 readers uh, with experience in uh, breast imaging uh, were uh, used for the analysis. So the ICC test showed a moderate inter-observer agreement uh, of 0 0.62. Uh, as I previously mentioned, the single photon counting detector uh, system recorded higher scores, uh, generally recorded higher scores than the flat panel detector. The uh, propagation-based images obtained at the synchrotron facility in Melbourne uh, using the Hamamatsu flat panel sensor were of higher image quality than standard dose uh, um, than the, than, the ref, than the reference image, uh, as well as in uh, Trieste. So both center agreed that the images generated with the PBCT technologies were higher quality, were generated with higher quality uh, or visually uh, presented a higher quality uh, than the corresponding um, images generated with conventional absorption-based uh, technology. Um, and this basically uh, shows that the improvement, improvement in image quality was much higher for the photon counting detector compared to uh, the um, flat panel detectors when we assess that, um, when we compared the um, grade that uh, the images recorded, the, the, the images um, obtained uh, in uh, Trieste, where the photon counting detector system uh, was uh, used. But they both agreed that photon counting system scored higher than the, uh, when compared to the uh, reference image. So this is the first study that assessed uh, PBCT image quality between uh, photon counting uh, detectors and flat panel detectors uh, in the settings of uh, uh, breast uh, uh, imaging with PBCT technology. Several factors are responsible for the higher performances of photon counting detectors, uh, but really what the, the spatial resolution is probably the one that influenced the, uh, or that affected the, uh, this type of uh, vis uh, this type of uh, um, visual um, assessment at the most. Uh, again, uh, 
the, 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 the detecting uh, size for the photon counting detector was, was of 0 0.06 millimeter compared to 0 0.16 millimeter of the photon counting uh, detector. There are limitations, a very small sample size was used. These were mastectomy specimens, and to my knowledge, uh, this uh, technology has not been implemented in uh, clinical practice yet, but we are working to, towards it. Um, and uh, again, using a synchrotron facility, the X-ray, the, uh, the nature of the X-ray beam is to be uh, monochromatic, and therefore a single kind of single energy is used throughout. But the potential of uh, single photon technology can really uh, leverage uh, energy-based um, color coded maps that can be applied to the images generated if applied to a conventional X-ray tube using a non-monochromatic, a not monochromatic type of X-ray beam. The results from this initial work show that photon counting detectors might provide improved image quality in the breast photon phase contrast technology compared to flat panel detectors and to current absorption-based technology. The results are promising in the development of phase contrast as a breast imaging diagnostic technique in the near future. And I guess the impact team is working towards it. Uh, once again, I just want to acknowledge uh, uh, the important work of all the, uh, what the, this is the reference list, but the important work of all the uh, authors involved uh, in uh, this study, uh, and uh, I'm presenting on behalf of everyone. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicola. I'm not sure if we can actually see whether people can make comments, Magdalen. Are they, if you're the host of the Zoom, are there any comments in the chat? Or is there any way we can see everybody who's on the call in the one Zoom? Maybe the view? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can only see Jack at the moment. We can't see everyone else. Now I can see Marcus. <laughs> Great talk there. Nicola? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, they're also... Oh, because they didn't turn on the, the video. Oh, okay. Because only Jack turned on now. Every people turn on the video, you can see every people. Exactly. Thank you, every people. Wonderful. Um, oh, hi, Kay. All starting to sort of come online. Um, I'm wondering if anybody has any questions for Nicola about the study. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Please go. Great work, Nicola, there. Beautiful results and very encouraging to see the um, big benefits from the photon counting detectors, especially since the team's just bought a very expensive ones. <laughs> That's great news. Uh, I just noticed in one of your slides that you said that the uh, the data with the photon counting detector had full phase retrieval, whereas the IMBL detector um, was a half phase retrieval. So I think that means like half the effective propagation distance. Is that to sort of compensate for the larger point spread function of the flat panel? Um, well, I guess that's what I was trying to mention when, we, when I said that we were trying to use similar scanning conditions. And I think the distance at the IMBL is larger than the distance. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, sorry, the distance in uh, Trieste with the photon counting detector is uh, mm -hmm. larger than the distance uh, in uh, Melbourne. Yeah. And uh, so I would say that for the purpose of this study, we assume that we and we consider the attenuation of the X-ray uh, beam through the air. Yeah. So okay. again, that's a bit of a. It, I would say it's limitations since simil, since 
only similar scanning conditions were used and not exactly the same. Okay. Um, but yeah. So sorry, just to check. So you you were trying to match the dose to the sample rather than the sort of propagation distance and is that right? I'd say maybe Amir, if you want to jump in, since Amir was the <laughs> Amir actually conducted yeah. the study. Okay, so I, well, Marcos, I'm not sure your question was about uh, the level of phase retrieval uh, yeah. or the distance, because for distance, the effective distance was almost similar, around six meters. The nine yeah. nine meters at CIR map is almost around, um, I think. Uh, around six meters effective yeah. distance, uh, which is similar to what we have at IMBO. In terms of uh, the theoretical values applied for phase retrieval, uh, in our previous studies at IMBL, we found that ha applying half phase retrieval uh, results in higher image quality. Yeah. But with the studies at CIRMAP, they believe that full phase retrieval uh, is more effective probably again, because of using the photon counting detector. Yep. So we believe that it's better to use the best image quality that we can get from each system rather than matching the theoretical values for phase retrieval. Okay. Yep. I think it makes sense given the point spread but functions and the pixel size. To the reference image, really, right? So, sorry, Janus, did you have a... Yes, so I may have missed some of those previous studies, but I'm not sure what you mean by half phase retrieval. So what, what does that mean? What, what, how does that work? That is the uh, theoretical value for delta to beta in the Tai Hon uh, phase retrieval algorithm. So <clears throat> applying the theoretical values, we call it full phase retrieval. If we use half of those theoretical values, we call it half phase retrieval. Uh, Okay, interesting. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Amir, for stepping in. <laughs> um, I have a question. I'm not sure whether we recorded with those samples, whether we recorded the breast density of them. So I'm wondering whether it's possible that the results can be skewed if, for example, there is a vast difference between the um, uh, Trieste and Australian synchrotron in terms of the size of the sample and the density of the breast. So I guess if you if you scanned six mastectomy samples that were very um, heavy breast density versus three that were very low breast density um, in Trieste, whether that has a difference. I'm just wondering whether there was any records about the samples. Does anyone know that? As much as I know, we didn't look at the density of the breast for those samples or the size, but I think the effect is minimal because the reference image for each case was different. So for, yeah. uh, as Nicola mentioned, for all the samples at IMBL, they were compared with absorption-based CT images of the same sample. Yeah. Um, but maybe, maybe there are some effects. I think that's something important to consider. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I realize we're comparing it to the reference image. So it, it would just be a good thing to kind of round out, perhaps, yeah. to know that. So, yeah. Um, do we have any further questions for Nicola? Oh, yeah, Janus, please go. One more, sorry. So, <laughs> um, so one thing we've had uh, issues with in the past is that the photon counting detectors that I've worked with, at least, often have issues with quite a large percentage of the of the area being in some way damaged or having bad pixels or something like this. So there usually has to be some sort of in technique interpolation or something similar used to account for this. Um, and we've been worried that that may affect the phase retrieval step. Um, so I was just wondering if you have any information about or whether or not that was the case with the uh, detector at CIRMA and what was done. So once again, I was not physically present for the, uh, during the 
actual imaging activity, uh, I would have loved to. Uh, so I'm not aware of any, you know, uh, technical issue that they might have had during the scanning of their specimen. Can, I, I don't I don't have an answer. Sorry, I, I wasn't there, so I don't I don't know. I, okay. Amir, Amir maybe maybe the team can comment on that because I think he was involved in both of these scans. Yeah. No, I don't think there were too many bad pixels uh, in that picture I detected, Yanis. Uh, I think it wasn't too bad. It, it, it was, uh, by now it was quite some time ago, so I don't have a very clear recollection, but uh, I'm pretty sure if there were big problems, I would have still remembered them. No, no not really. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, well, we, we, don't, we don't have any more questions online, so um, I think we'll, we'll thank Nicola again. Well done, the virtual club. Um, and do we have a presenter for November? We yeah, do. We are, I'm pleased to let you know that Luca, our um, external advisory committee member from Italy, so he will be our next speaker in November. Okay, and are we going to have a lighter one? Uh, a lighter, a later. A later one. Yeah, yeah, it will be our fourth because Italy, so it's still early for him. So our next seminar will be uh, from four thirty to five thirty. That is seven thirty in Italy. <laughs> yes, so they'll be having espresso um, and, croissant. and croissants, <laughs> and we can have our canapes and orange juice or something. Um, <laughs> And oh, that's very kind of Luca to volunteer as well. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Luca's been doing a lot of work with motion correction as well in that space, I think. So and Luca was also involved in this. Yes, study. yes. So, um, yeah. Maybe Janice is a good question. Uh, that the last one about technical issues, a good question uh, to keep uh, yeah. for the next monthly meeting. Yeah, I'm sure um, Luca would love a question. Yeah. What, what's the topic of What's the topic of Luca's talk, by the way? Um, I I will send out the invitation properly this week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It might still be coming to us, Tim. So we we okay. only asked him the other day, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean. Yeah. So we don't want to give away all the secrets. Just. It's, you know, it's the tantalization of not knowing what the talk is going to be about, Tim, that encourages you to attend. Well, I keep to attend anyway. E e even if it's going to be boring, I'll still attend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, with that, we'll close the meeting. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Goodbye. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nicola. Thank you. Thanks.